Welcome to Lit Poetry, the podcast where we go on a journey of discovery, reading, analyzing, and discussing great poetry from around the world. Poetry is worth it because the reading and writing of poetry is a revolutionary act that has the potential to transform both the reader and our world. The coffin lid creaks shut, and the story of one more life concludes like the closing of a mysterious book. The church steeple empties its ancient throat. The mourners gathered, shrouded in black, their eyes wet with memory. A shovel guts the trembling earth in anger. The last rites are read, and an emaciated corpse, once animated with life, is lowered within. This is death. This is your future. This is the final frontier. How strange it is then that we human beings spend so little time contemplating this inescapable reality. Why is this the case? Why do we avoid coming to terms with our mortality? Does fear hold us hostage? What about our anxieties and regrets? As for myself, well, I avoid thinking about death just like the next person. It's just so difficult, so confronting. Which is why I really appreciate the poem we are taking a look at today by Emily Dickinson. With today's featured poem, Dickinson bravely confronts the ever-present specter of death through her wonderful use of her poetic imagination. What a great way to kick off season four of the Lit Poetry Podcast. So let's take a listen to the poem, shall we? May I present you with Because I Could Not Stop for Death by Emily Dickinson. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children played at wrestling in a ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice but a mound. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feels shorter than the day I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. Welcome back. Emily Dickinson was born in 1830 and died in 1886. A recluse writer, Dickinson had only had a few of her poems published during her lifetime, And after 1865, she rarely even left her home in Amshurst, Massachusetts. Yet from within this rather introverted existence sprang poetry of the highest order, poetry that explored both the hills and valleys of human experience. It was partly achieved through Dickinson's innovative and revolutionary poetic style. In developing her unique voice, inspired by English writers like William Wordsworth and Charlotte Bronte, Dickinson's poetry charts a course through the everyday existence of human life by shining a light on the sublime, terrifying, and astonishing aspects of our existence. A regular theme that appears in Dickinson's poems is death. Indeed, she interrogated this theme deeply over her life and examined it from multiple perspectives. Poems like I Heard a Fly Buzz When I Died and As Imperceptibly as Grief and There's Been a Death in the Opposite House are just a few of the poems that she's written that focus on the subject matter of death. Because I Could Not Stop for Death seems to connect with elements of Christianity, especially in references to an eternal afterlife. The actual journey to whatever comes after death has more to do with classical Greek and Roman mythology, 
Death here can be compared to the figure of Sharon in Greek mythology. Sharon was a boatman who would ferry the souls of the dead across the rivers that separate the world of the living from the world of the dead. For Dickinson, the figure of death takes on a similar role, accompanying the speaker from life into death. This embodiment of death as a civilized gentleman within the poem is referred to in poetic terminology as a personification. Death is presented as a type of kindly chaperone who comes unannounced to pick up the speaker and guide them to the afterlife. Although what the afterlife actually is in this poem remains a little bit unclear. The mannerisms of death in the poem are both calm and measured. Indeed, death is troubled not, as the poem puts it, with haste. And overall, this disposition simply makes sense, especially for an eternal being who is not bound by the constraints of time. Death's silence throughout the poem is also significant. This silence has a distancing effect, creating a lonely ambivalence around the narrator, and this highlights the mystery of death itself, who is totally foreign to us in life until he makes his final presence known. So in this next section of the podcast, I want to talk about some of the themes of the poem, starting with an even deeper examination of the theme of death and dying. Because I Could Not Stop for Death is an exploration of both death's unavoidability and the mystery that surrounds what happens when we die. In the poem, a woman rides with death in his carriage, by all likelihood heading towards some kind of afterlife. The fantastical nature of what is happening is strangely measured and calm, with the events clearly being outside the speaker's control. As such, it's as though the speaker simply surrenders herself to the events and accepts her fate. The experience of death here is at once natural and also a little bit absurd. Indeed, the poem's opening lines make the natural and absurd aspects of death clear. The speaker herself couldn't stop for death. I mean, who in their right mind would stop for death when he comes knocking? But instead, death simply stops for her nonetheless, as he will stop for us in the future. This is quite a bizarre situation when you think about it. Of course, the speaker herself is very compliant in dying, and she surrenders to the journey ahead of her with no complaint. In the carriage, the speaker also finds herself journeying with immortality, Whether this is another personified figure, it's not quite clear, but the mere presence of immortality in the carriage does raise questions about what happens to people when they die. Immortality is ambiguous here. Its presence could support the Christian idea of an afterlife, which some critics feel runs through Dickinson's poems, or, by contrast, immortality could be somewhat more ironic pointing to a permanent state of nothingness that may await us in death. The carriage stops by a school, fields, and perhaps even the speaker's own grave in stanza 5. These seem to represent different stages of life, starting from childhood and proceeding, like the journey itself, to the fated final destination. To emphasise the poem's sense of awe about the mysterious nature of death, the final stanza is filled with uncertainty and paradox. The speaker explains that the carriage passed these sites centuries ago, but that the entire time that has elapsed also feels shorter than a day. In the midst of eternity, therefore, long stretches of years may indeed feel like only a second has actually passed. This paradox thus highlights the difficulty of imagining eternity. Life is understood within the framework of time as we move through different stages of ageing, but in death, The perception of time, indeed all perception, ceases to exist. Unless, of course, there is an afterlife, an idea which the poem seems open to but inconclusive about. (laughs) 
final theme I want to explore in the podcast deals with the cycle of life and death that we find in human existence. Because I could not stop for death says a lot about the cyclical ebb and flow of life. And we witness this as the speaker in the poem herself describes the locations that she passes through on her journey towards death. And each of these seems significant. The journey structure mirrors how life itself is a passage from birth to death. The sights that the speaker sees along the way illustrate how life and death are commonly experienced as a natural kind of rhythm. Indeed, the poem might be hinting here how life itself is not even possible without the possibility of death. Something to note here are Dickinson's allusions to circular objects and actions within the poem that point to the cyclical nature of life and death. A journey in life is often taken with the help of an object like a wheel. Think of cars and bicycles. The carriage with its wheels within the poem is a good case in point. They are circular and they spin around and around, mimicking the pattern of life and how it unfolds, starting from dust, moving to life, and then returning to dust once again. Another allusion to circular realities occurs in the description of the school, where children strove at recess in a ring. This image of children playing in a circular ring is important and shows how life persists beyond a person's demise. Moreover, this idea is actually quite unsettling, especially when you think about it really carefully. Indeed, people will strive to keep living even in the knowledge that their own death is inevitable. The circular cycle of birth and death will carry on regardless. I mean, have you ever wondered about the fact that once you're dead, your friends and family will carry on life without you? If you think about it, you'll understand what I'm trying to get at here. This cycle is also witnessed when the speaker passes by a field. While the sun is setting, representing the speaker's death, the gazing grain seems to be growing strong. This then is another example of the continuation of life after death. Every year, crops are harvested, representing death and then are replanted or regrown, illustrating the shift from life into death and back again. Overall, the poem's circular descriptions of life and death are both perplexing and mystifying. Dickinson manages to put into images the complexity of this life cycle and intentionally leaves questions unresolved for the reader to consider about what it all ultimately means. So it's time to wrap up the first episode of the Season 4 Lit Poetry Podcast. After a rather long, rejuvenating break, it feels great to be back. We've got a fantastic selection of poems in the weeks to come, so I hope you tune in to the season ahead. Of course, if you enjoy our work, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or to our podcast. Your support is incredibly encouraging to us. To access all of our work, visit our newly revamped website at www.litpoetry.com. We'll finish by listening one more time to the poem. Until next week, I'll see you later. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children played at wrestling in a ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice but a mound. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feels shorter than the day 
I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. You've been listening to the Lit Poetry Podcast, presented by James Laidler. For more podcasts, poetry videos, and other useful resources, visit our website at www.litpoetry.com. Thanks for listening.